But Jamal Malalela is real and uh, and spectacular. He is an assistant for the Warriors, uh, moving up that line on the staff, and so excited to have him join us here on Willard and Dibs in 95-7 the game after the Warriors get a much-needed win, and I don't think I'm overstating that, Coach. Like, can you take us sort of inside how the bench felt? Because it wasn't just Steph's intensity in the fourth quarter. So many guys talked about how it seemed like you guys almost played this like a must-win situation on a Monday in November. Yeah, thanks, Mark and Dan, for having me. Uh, pretty crazy game last night. We're sort of coming off the emotional high still this morning. Um, it almost felt like a playoff game. It really did. Like you know, we finished the game and we're sort of a bit of an exhale, but but uh, I think that was the collective effort we needed to sort of just get the ship going the right direction again. And I think the NBA is really about navigating the 82 game schedule. And last night was a great opportunity to sort of figure some things out, try some different combinations. Um, and you know, I think I think we're riding on Steph Steph Curry's back right now. The guy's playing incredible, like you said, and so it's a joy to watch that from the front row. Um, and I think it, it bodes well for our future and kind of where we go here in the next few games. So before we look at the full 82, let's look at just that one. Steph Curry, 17 of 24, 7 of 12 from distance, 47 points. As Mark said, no turnovers. Do you have an opportunity from the front row to take just a moment of appreciation in the moment at the maestro-like performance that he gives? It's so funny that you, you sort of ask that. And I'm, I'm two years now with the Warriors. And I remember last year a bunch of times, uh, I'd be sitting there, and I'd sort of, uh, with one of my other work colleagues, we'd sort of see Steph do something crazy, and we'd look at each other and say, that was, like, incredible. Like, I'm so <laughs> glad he's on, on our team. I don't coach again. <laughs> and last night was the same. And I think what's interesting, especially when you're coaching a game, you know, and there's so many things happening in the NBA, like, sometimes the score that someone has, you don't actually notice. You don't know if someone has 24 points or 47 points or, or two points quite often. And so after I was walking out, out of the arena and I heard the announcer say 47 points, and I thought to myself, holy moly, like this guy truly was special. You can feel it on the floor, but once you see the stat line that goes with it, uh, you know, what a phenomenal job and, and an amazing player. We all got to witness it last night. Uh, Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game, and we're talking with Warriors assistant Jama Malalela with us here today after they beat the Kings uh, and Steph had the legendary performance. Uh, the other side of this, Coach, uh, it's been the running theme throughout the 11 games so far, uh, the transition to a very different second unit. What do you see, and, and, and what are you guys working on to get more out of that group? Yeah, without question. I think it clearly is, is, is a factor of our elite talent is playing really, really well, and we've got to get everyone else kind of catching up to that, uh, to that level. Um, and I think the exciting part of that is that we're trying to do it with a young nucleus. And you look at some young players that have played very few games in the NBA and, and probably even fewer before that in college or, or you know, AAU system, whatever it was, and now they're thrust into really big, high-profile games when the goal is to win the basketball game. And so the coaching staff, it's this fun puzzle of putting the right pieces in the right places and, and, and navigating that and trying to figure that out as we go through these games. Um, and players sort of getting hot and, and, and riding, that, riding that kind of run that they're on um, and then just growing them. And I think that's a long-term process. I think we all bought into that and we realized that, that growing young players takes time. And that's early in the season. It's great to go through these bumps and bruises because we learn what you have and learn what you got to fix. When you grow the young players, and this is what we hear from fans a lot, why isn't so-and-so playing or playing more? Why aren't they getting consistent minutes? What's the biggest challenge from a coaching perspective in having Wiseman and Moody and Kaminga try to get the consistent minutes that fans are so clamoring for? Yeah, I think, I think the reality of it is you're never really locked into what one player does. As a coaching staff, you're trying to figure out how all five players interact out there together. And that becomes the challenge. And when you start, when you start figuring out rotations and, and who's playing and who's not playing, it's much more about who fits with who versus any one individual player and their, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their individual strengths or weaknesses. So that's sort of the, the new part of this. And I think that's why, you know, we're experimenting with Wiseman and Kaminga and Moody, but then also we'll have DiVincenzo back soon and, and, and Jamichael and like these new players as well. So there's all these people that weren't part of our framework last season. And so this year it's about navigating who plays well with who. And then the unique part is then the integration with the starting group. So, you know, does Wiggs play well with those guys? Does Clay play well with those guys? Does Draymond play well with those guys? And figuring those combinations out, and that's sort of just the process we're in right now. Coach, uh, a lot of eyes on uh, Jordan Poole. He's had one hell of a six weeks. I, I, I think everybody understands what, uh, what he's been through. And, and now also... Uh, twofold, the responsibility that not only comes with, uh, you know, big time contracts, but the responsibility of actually being such a young player, but as we've talked about, kind of being the leader of that second unit. 
How, how do you how do you feel like he's he's handling that, and, and and what do you guys want to see from him? Yeah, I think you're you're really right that that it's been a it's been one heck of a ride that he's been on, right? From winning the championship last year through all the summer, through all the preseason stuff, um, to now start being in the meat of, of playing games each and every night. And I think that's a, a learning curve again for everybody. And I think we're really comfortable with where Jordan's at. He's had a few really good games already this season, um, you know. And I think it's just we're right on the on the cusp of sort of figuring it out. And like I said before, it's not any one individual. So it's not just Jordan's play. It's Jordan's combination with other players. And so that's where I think we just got to keep keep sort of getting that 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 comfort. And, and you really need minutes and experience and time to do it. That's really the only way that you really sort of break through. Um, so I think we're really confident that Jordan's going to really pop through here. We know he's such a great player. We're so excited for him, right? He's just such a talent. Uh, and he's such great character. I think that really came out. And for me, as someone who gets to work with him each and every day, you're just so amazed by his work, right? His drive, his sort of tenacity to be better. And so we're super confident that's going to happen here. And we just got to kind of keep, work, keep, keep doing the work to get there. His improvement from year one to where he is now is remarkable. Clay Thompson a, is a topic that comes up for many people as far as what's wrong with Clay and can Clay get back to where he is? Where do you see the arc of Clay coming off a summer where he didn't play and a little bit of a slow start to his year this year? Yeah, again, like I, I think he kind of is a bit of a slow starter in general. If you look at the last five or six seasons, that tends to be his trend. Um, but I think that, that what's exciting to us is that, you know, coming back off the injury and, and joining us the second half of last season, like such impact games that he had, right? Like such a special player that can just do things that other people can't. And that ability he has to, to knock down shots and, and to guard as well, um, you know, in the combination of that with his size um, and his experience too. And I think we, when you talk about sort of people that fit together, you know, that starting unit we have and, and Clay's role in that is such an important part of that unit being pretty dominant right now in the league. Um, so I think we're, again, with Clay, he purposely sort of had a summer where there wasn't quite as much 5-on-5 five five live just to protect his body and keep him safe and, and ready to go for the regular season. So we knew there'd be, you know, a 10-16 to 16 game window of him getting back up to speed. Um, and we see that happening now, too. So he's starting to shoot the ball better, you know, of late um, and be more confident, more dominant, so that he's going to continue to grow as well and, and shoot. When you got a player like Clay on your team, and let that thing rip. He's such a good shooter, so it's fun to watch it go in. You're listening to Warriors assistant Jama Malalela with us here on Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Coach, I'd love to sort of circle back to the start because I'm so fascinated by the intensity the group took to the court to try to get this early season victory yesterday because it was only about a week and a half ago that Steph had some post-game comments where he's like, look, it's October. Okay, it's, it's really early. So to what level you can... Take us inside your locker room and sort of the collective mentality right now with whatever this bump in the road has been. How, how do you see guys handling it and, and, and sort of what is going to be their, their approach to regular season games here in this month? Yeah, I think, I think the, the part of the NBA that's special is that when things aren't quite working, and, and it's clear to say that they weren't, especially on this last road trip that we were on, you have to identify what the problems are. And then you have to figure out what the solutions to those problems are. And last night was an attempt to find some of those solutions. You know, and one was sort of that sort of that, that purposeful, focused energy that needs to be there consistently for 48 minutes to win NBA games. It's a really good league. There are no easy games in the NBA anymore. Like any night you, you suit up, it's a tough, tough, uh, you know, deal to try and get that W. Um, and then I think the other piece is we've identified some things that we need to do, and a lot of those um, – on the basketball court in terms of X's and O's are things that we tried to implement yesterday. And I think that is where the ferocity and sort of the intensity came from last night. And so to me, it's not a matter of it's early season or late season. It's we're trying to correct some things. And it takes work to do that. One of the best statements I've ever heard is it, it's going to be okay and, and we're going to be okay, but we have to make it okay. And last night was a, was a step in making, in making it okay for us and, and kind of getting us going the right direction again. 11 down, 71 to go, coach, and a couple of off days. What happens between now and Thursday for the club? Yeah, a really good sort of off day today where guys can sort of reset, you know, still coming off this, that long road trip they were on and get themselves completely back to normal. Uh, two really good days of practice where we'll continue to implement some of these new sort of uh, philosophies and theories and, and, um, and, and focuses for us um, in these two good practice days. And I think that gets us sort of reset with our roster. Um, and, then we, and then we attack Cleveland, and that's a heck of a team. Uh, they're playing really, really well, obviously, right now. So it'll be a great challenge for us in our own building um, with us being sort of energized and, and having a bit of momentum. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think that'll be a good sort of ne- next test in the, in the road for us. And like you said at the onset, like, it, you know, it, it, it is a long season, and, and we all know that. And I think that there's, there's so much that happens, so many ups and downs. Uh, Coach reminded us the other day that we, like, lost 9 of 11 or something crazy in March last year, you know, in, in a championship year. So 
these sort of droughts do happen, and it's all about the process of doing the work. That's why sports is fun. That's why we all watch the game, and it's, that's why it's fun to coach it. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. Hey, Coach, uh, great to have you today. Really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much, guys. All right, there he goes. Coach. I'm going to do it one last time. Do it. Is Jama Malalela with us here on Willard and Dale.